Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, um, I would love if you could give me some resources, help me find some resources to, uh, clarify what some of these terms with inks mean, because, uh, I, uh, seem to have stepped in another area of controversy. <laughs> so let's, let's take a look at the pens. All right, so these are the pens I have in use this week. I have a Parker International with a citrine finish, a Platinum President, a Parker Jotter, a Parker Dual Fold, a Caveco Dia 2, a Geha 705, whoops, a uh, Platinum 3776 with uh, the Sheng Yo finish, and it's uh, a coarse nib, and finally a Pelican M800. So, let's see how they write. Okay, so I got my year correct this time, which I uh, messed up on last week. So, let's look at the pens. So, the first one I uh, rev I did a first impression this week. This is a Parker Dual Fold International, which is a smaller version of the Parker Dual Fold. And did I mention it has a citrine finish? And thanks to a comment on, me, on my channel, I just realized that citrine is one of my birthstones. So that was kind of fun. I also found out that citrine is a gemstone, so I uh, didn't know that either. So just a beautiful, beautiful finish. Uh, somebody asked me, uh, I think on Instagram, if it was the DNA model, and no, that's a... Uh, know how to explain it, but just more twisted and this isn't. So as a few people have mentioned, this is a very wet writer. It's a Parker Dual Fold. International. The Centennial is a slightly larger version. You'll see one in a few minutes, but for reasons I decided to put a different pen beside this one. The ink in it is Parker Quink. Washable blue. Which, uh, this week I decided to, uh, to be A-S-H. Wow, that's an ugly S. <laughs> uh, this week I decided to do a video where I looked at washable blue and compared it to, uh, Parker's other blue. So, uh. I put a link in the video description, so check that out if you're into that kind of thing. But it was uh, very eye-opening in a lot of ways, which I'll get into at the end of the video. But on the whole, what a wet writer. What a nice pen, and what a absolutely gorgeous pen. And yeah, a little translucent, at the same time so solid. Just beautiful. My next pen is a Parker, I'm sorry, a, <laughs> a Platinum President. One of the sleepers in the pen world. I, I think the Parker Dual Fold tends to be one of those also, but uh, you know, I, I didn't show the last nib, but I'll show this one. Ground to a Cursive Italic by Dan Smith, the Nib Smith. So this is a Platinum President. A broad nib, but ground to a cursive italic. You know, I don't think I've ever written with a natural uh, Parker Pres or Platinum President nib. The ink in it, as I discovered in the midst of last week, was a Monte Grappa Bordeaux. Which is an ink that it B O U R D E A U X, which is an ink that is sadly discontinued by Monte Grappa, as they 
decided to pr pursue more saturated inks. Uh, this one fell by the wayside, and that's too bad because it is such a nice, beautiful, subtle color. I enjoyed this ink very much. I have two bottles of it, and uh, it will be a sad day when I run out of those two bottles. Alright, so I needed a pen for an upcoming project this weekend that could write permanent ink. So this is a uh, Parker Jotter. I haven't had this pen out in a while. And uh, it's full of platinum carbon black. And it's a little short if I don't post it. This is one of the few pens I do post. So Parker Jotter. This has a medium nib. And the ink is platinum. Carbon black. Uh, just a very nice, it's a, one of those nano inks. It has, a, instead of a dye-based pigment, it has a particle-based pigment. They're just kind of suspended in solution, I guess. And, uh, well, I've got a surprise for you here toward uh, the end of the writing sample. Where I'm going to show you a couple of inks compared. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for an ink that is not water-soluble in any way, this would be the one. Uh, I like it for address labels. I like it for uh, labels in, in, uh, that I put with my pens in my pen case. My next ink is in a Parker Dual Fold uh, Centennial. We'll just hold that in the international side by side here for a second. So a little broader, a little longer. Let's just compare nibs. Yeah, and the uh, Centennial has a much larger nib. Uh, I've been using this pen kind of as a daily writer here at home. It's a wet pen, just like the, the, the International. It's just a fine point instead of a medium point. Find my line here. Parker Dual Fold. Um, Centennial Centennial Homes Wow That advertising jingle just came into my head And this is Parker Quink Black uh, Thanks to doing my video on the uh, Washable Blue I've discovered that most of their inks Except for the Washable Blue No longer have titles like Permanent or whatever They're just blue Black. Blue black. Oh, that's it. So Parker Quink Black. Uh, it's a dye based ink instead of a you know one of those nano inks like the platinum carbon black. There we go. So that's been my daily raider at home. And in case anyone's wondering, the bottle doesn't even mention the color, let alone permanent or anything. You know, just that it's black ink. Whereas the washable ink, it's all kinds of, oops, yeah, all kinds of notation. Whatever. You know, I, uh, okay, I'm going to get into that topic at the end of the video, so shut up, squirrel. <laughs> All right, my next pen, I inked up thanks to a few viewer comments. I just like, yeah, I haven't written with this pen in a while. This is a Caveco Dia 2. I did put the gold nib on it. It made a world of difference because I honestly did not like the steel nib that came with this pen. So this is a Caveco Dia 2.
broad nib, gold, but I won't say that. And the ink in it is the very lovely Noodler's Matahari's Corpjul. Which I think is absolute, absolutely gorgeous. I don't know why the ink appeals to me. You know, part of it I suspect is because of my interest in the First World War. Because uh, if you've studied the First World War, you know all about Matahari. But uh, part of it, honestly, that held my attention is what a beautiful color. All right, so the uh, computer just froze. And uh, I've learned that when that happens, I... Uh, I freeze and I can't restore myself so if you don't see me anymore after this that that would be why if you do see me after this it would mean that I was wrong or you know somehow I got something wrong but anyway the next one is the Geha 705 this has a uh, vintage cartridge in it I haven't written it down a whole lot you know I thought I would but it's pretty stingy on the ink actually whoops geha and the ink in it of course is vintage geha blue I kinda wanna get ooh that's interesting there's a little bit of different color there on the E I kinda wanna get hold of a vintage geha converter if there is such a thing I think it'd be fun to ink up these pens that way, but uh, you know, I can refill cartridges too, so you know, whatever. But uh, you know, not you know, the most exciting nip, but what a great writer! It feels good in the hand, and uh, you know, I and on my channel we talked about I couldn't figure out what this said. You can't read it there, but anyway, I uh, used a loop and I was able to translate most of it. And then uh, one of my viewers came through for me and showed me a, a photograph of a much better quality label. So, you know, mine is very worn and faded and theirs wasn't. So, you know, search through, uh, search through the uh, comments and the posts and I have that there somewhere. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I I got most of it, but I did not know the last line. And uh, the person who sent me that showed me what the last line actually says. Uh, this is a... <clears throat> oh, 8.05. That's why I'm so tired. <laughs> I need to go to bed. But anyway, this is a Sheng Yo finish. Platinum 3776. Uh, it has in it a very fun ink, but, you know, it's also a fun nib. It's a double broad, and kind of a rounded. There we go, sort of. Kind of a rounded sort of nib. Big blob of tipping on it. This is Diamine November Rain. Now, it kind of reminds me, uh, when I was a kid, I had kind of a crush on Belinda Carlisle, and I remember her song about summer rain, and if I remember right, that was about a soldier who was going away to war, and, uh, you know, putting me in the age, I'm thinking I would have been, it would have been in the 80s, so I'm trying to figure out what war that would have been, because that was before any of the Gulf Wars, so I don't know. Maybe he was just going away to be a soldier, I don't know, but, yeah. That, that song, which, uh, I don't know if, her, if I've heard it since then, but I'm clearly remembering playing it on the cassette tape that I had when I was a kid. And, uh, okay, something I'm going to have to look up after I stop filming this. <laughs> All right, and my final pen is a plat, no, this is a Pelican M800. 
and broad nib and it has purple rain and i remember when prince died he was a uh, whoops pelican i almost wrote prince there this was one of his songs and i couldn't remember it i had to search it i don't know why i couldn't remember the title but uh yeah as soon as i searched it and heard it, i was like oh yeah i remember that song purple rain you notice i didn't sing november rain uh, i'm not as good at singing that song dancing with my baby in the summer rain oh yeah because it's summer rain not november rain whoops <laughs> but anywho we'll do my fabulous swatch here some vertical and horizontal strokes And there we go. Now, uh, to open up my final discussion, which is going to be about ink uh, and some of the words that are used to, to describe ink, I want to show you a picture. So what I did, um, kind of between last night and tonight, is I uh, did some swatches of different colors. And I was just curious about how they stood up to water. So let's show you a few highlights. So here's Parker Quink Washable Blue. So all I did is I dripped water on, let it sit for a while, and then dabbed it off. So that handled it pretty well. So did the Permanent Blue. Like I said in my video uh, about Parker Quink Washable Blue, I couldn't find a difference between these two inks. So, I'll talk about that in a bit, but I wanted to show you a few others. So then I did some uh, Roaring Klingner Scabiosa. There's some faded bits, there's some smudged bits, but overall, very good. Permanent Black, which as I said at the beginning of this writing sample, just claims to be black. So, I'll talk about that bit of a smudge but readable underneath uh, November rain yipe don't get that one wet platinum carbon black nothing no sign at all that I dripped water on other than the page is kind of wrinkled uh, Matahari's cordial this surprised me because I've done paper chromatography and there is a very fluorescent color that comes out of it. But nothing when I just drip water on it and dab it off a few minutes later. So interesting. And then purple rain, again, just like the November rain. Don't get that on your writing because it's going to be gone. So make of that what you will. You, you can look at a... Better quality photographs on uh, either Instagram or in this video description. I have a link to uh, an Evernote page that will show you higher quality pictures. But, uh, yeah. I think I need to explore the world of ink a little bit more. And I think specifically I need to explore what some of the words mean when they describe inks. So, don't expect anything this week, but maybe next week. Wait for the red ink. Right. One other thing you can expect me to discuss maybe next week, or maybe in its own video. What? What? Yeah, I've got some Par Parker Quink red. It's been stained. So I'll be discussing that soon. Uh, the bottle is sealed, um, but I'll be cutting it open and we will be discussing. So this should be fun, but not this week. This is a future topic. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed the red. I will ink up a pen or two this week and uh, start writing with it. And, you know, you can expect to see that next week in pens in use. 
I, uh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, thank you to, let me grab the right bottle here. Thank you to, <laughs> thank you to Proto Pens for the gift of the Parker Quink washable blue. Mine is, uh, definitely getting a little low. So it'll be good to have a replacement. And of course, uh, now that I've got this permanent, I think I'll be doing some more experiments with it. And actually, that brings up a good question. Never thought about this the whole time I was filming. Because I remember when uh, Parker Quink Black was actually called Parker Quink Permanent Black. But I was, a few of you in the comments pointed this out. It doesn't actually say permanent on the box. Nor does the blue say permanent. The only one that gets a special label now is the washable. So, with the failure I had earlier this week of the Parker Quink Permanent Blue to actually, excuse me, to actually be permanent, I don't think Parker's claiming that anymore. I know they did, and a lot of retailers still sell it as Parker Quink Permanent Blue. But Parker itself is no longer making that claim. And, and it's the same thing with the Parker Quink Permanent Black. They're not making that claim anymore. They're just claiming that it's black. So uh, that just went whoosh when I filmed my video that you saw on Wednesday. I, uh, so I want to delve into that topic a little bit more. Now on that note... Uh, what do permanent, washable, and some of these other terms actually mean? Now, for the washable, I have found, and from my comments, I've heard several different explanations. One of them was that the washable works with, a, apparently there's an ink eraser that works with fountain pen ink. Uh, I have also heard that washable will wash out of clothes. Um, permanent. You know, I, I think of it as ink that's kind of hard to get off the paper. So, you know, if it gets wet, it, you know, it might run a little, but enough will stay behind that you can read it. Uh, it won't fade too bad. But, uh, you know, in the comments, some people said, well, light fastness is what refers to the light. Per um, other people said, no, permanent has to do with how well it fades. And what was the term they used here? Uh, waterproof means that it won't run if it gets wet. Uh, and then you have terms like bulletproof, archival, do document ink, um, light fastness, water resistant, and, uh, and a whole bunch opened up to me. And, and, you know, I think part of the problem is these companies use the terms inconsistently. One company means permanent to be this, another company means permanent to be this. So, uh. I want to spend some time, you know, Richard Bender is a good source, uh, but I want to just kind of explore around and, uh, well, anyway, the short version is I, I see another video coming where I explore these terms and probably show some examples. Uh, I feel like that will be a long break type of uh, video, uh, maybe uh, spring break or, or uh, I don't want to wait till summer break, but you know, when I get a four-day break, maybe. Uh, I, I do have Monday off for uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, but uh, it just doesn't seem like a long enough break. And I need, I need time to research anyway, so I'm not ready. But what an interesting uh, can of worms. Just as I put the whole Parker Quink washable blue controversy to bed, now we have new controversy over all these fancy terms. So I'm going to have to just do some research and... Uh, well, that's uh, part of the fun of doing this. You know, it's part of the fun of teaching is all of a sudden you run into something. You're like, oh, I don't know that. And I should know that. You know, I, I, I'm all haughty and, oh, I'll do a Q&A video. And, you know, I did one over the holiday break. I, uh, there's a lot I don't know. And, uh, you know, the more I learn, the more I discover that, holy cow, there's really a lot I don't know. So I'm, I'm discovering that just how little I know. And uh, no, it's, it's a good humbling experience, and, and it's also a good chance to learn more because I don't want to stay not knowing those things. So I'll probably discover even more stuff I don't know. But anyway, 
Um, also in the process of this, I was recommended a, what is it, an ink guy? Uh, anyway, it's a YouTube channel where he reviews ink. Uh, I'd never heard of it. You know, I knew about Vita R, who I linked down below. Um, yes, I did. And I also linked uh, an ink guy, both talking about the Parker Quink washable blue. And I, I linked to a Fountain Pen Network thread on the topic. And uh, interestingly, I found a United Kingdom retailer who calls this uh, permanent, uh, calls it Royal Blue. So the washable blue is washable royal blue. They don't market it under that name here in the United States. So that was interesting. So just all these different things I am learning. and uh, Or learning that I don't know. It just... Uh, I don't want to say it's rewarding. <laughs> but it is. It, it's fun. I, uh, I think if I quit growing in this hobby, I'll stagnate and I'll get bored. So, and ink, I enjoy writing with ink, but ink is definitely one of those areas where I know very little. So, uh, yeah, that may be an area to delve into. You know, I, I continue to repair vintage pens and discover new challenges, like trying to repair a Parker Vacumatic. Um, but, uh, yeah, ink is a whole area where all I do is write with it. I know very little about it, so I think that'll be a good place to begin is just exploring some of the basic terms so expect that soon uh i didn't write down too many other topics but uh I, I will just reiterate my comment from the beginning of the video if you know of good places to get more information about inks you know good reputable sources uh please leave a comment down below in the comments because uh i am looking for places to look and uh Ink being a area that I've never really explored. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a lot of good references. In other news, uh, in North Dakota, the mask mandate expires on the 18th. And since cases have, they've act, honestly, they've plummeted. Uh, it sounds like it's going to expire and not be renewed. So, does that mean I'm going to stop wearing this? Oh no. Um, there's a new virulent strain walking around. It hasn't been spotted in North Dakota yet, but it's only a matter of time. I haven't been vaccinated yet. And, uh, we have had our healthcare workers vaccinated in this state. This state's actually stayed ahead on the vaccines, but on the other hand, you know, in a small state like this, if they can screw up vaccinations, they can't, they probably can't do anything, so... Uh, but anyway, I am looking forward to the day when I get my vaccination. As, as a teacher, I, I guess I'm a little higher up on the totem pole, but we'll see. I've heard no word on yet on when teachers are in line for it in this state. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that mandate expires on Monday, and I'm really curious to see what happens in school on Tuesday. Thanks to uh, Adventure Denali, I'm going to be filming a video this weekend on a typewriter, which uh, I only own one, so I don't expect typewriters to be a recurring thing on this channel, but you know, she inspired me to do a video on a typewriter, so I'll be do filming that this weekend, and you can expect to see it next week. So, uh, And maybe some, ooh, that'd be an interesting topic, some meditations on writing with uh, a pen versus a typewriter versus other electronic means so uh we'll we'll see what comes out of all that but anyway i want to thank you for watching and if videos like this interest you where i talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points i would invite you to subscribe and again if you have some sources on ink and the terminology that's used with ink especially more reputable sources i would really welcome that uh, because that's my uh, one of my big research topics that's upcoming. And I'll just add, uh, I could tell listening to my voice, I was tired last night when I filmed the writing sample. True story. <laughs> to close this off. Last night, I've been planning this uh, April Fool's video. And, and uh, so last night, I just thought, well, I better start getting serious about starting to film it or writing a script or something. So I, I went to Google 
and I googled, when is April 1st? <laughs> Guess when April 1st is. <laughs> so, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.